Hello everyone. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Carissa. I'm a K-12 teacher with a background in special education and I'm currently an assistive technology specialist in Southern California. Here on The Technified Teacher, I share tips, tricks, and tutorials to help you use accessible technology tools in your classroom. This video will be kicking off a new series where I will be going over all of the accessibility features that are built into a Chromebook. And I'll be starting with two tools that support reading. Let's get started. Okay, so before we jump into the tools themselves, I'm going to show you where you can find the accessibility features on a Chromebook. So first you need to go down to your taskbar. And then in this lower right corner where you see like the battery and the timestamp, you're going to click and that will bring up your systems menu. Now I have my accessibility tools and settings set so that they show up in the system menu at all times. But if you don't see this, you can click on this gear icon, which is your settings. And then on the left side, click on advanced and then scroll down until you find accessibility. And then here's the option that will let you keep your accessibility options in the system menu at all times. From here, you can also manage your accessibility features. So you can turn them on and off as well as adjust any of the settings. All right, so the first reading tool that I want to show you is Chromevox. Now, Chromevox is an entire screen reader. It was designed for people with visual impairments and it provides spoken feedback for everything on the screen. For this reason, it's probably not going to be the tool that most students use, um, but I do wanna show you how it, just generally how it works so you know how students might be interacting with web pages if they are using Chromebox. All right, so I'm gonna turn it on. Okay, and as you can see, it puts an orange box around whatever part of the screen it is reading at that moment. So I'm going to use some keyboard commands to kind of navigate through and give you an idea of how Chromebox sounds and how it looks when it's interacting with a web page. November 19, 2018, link. Press search plus space to activate. Bye, Laura, Anastasia. Beep, exclamation mark, beep, exclamation mark, beep, exclamation mark. D, alarm, on, your, cell, phone, shakes. Okay, so you get the idea. As you could hear, it is reading everything, including punctuation marks within the text. And I was navigating using the tab button, as well as holding the search key down and using the arrows to um, kind of move through the web page. And if you ever want to stop the spoken feedback, all you need to do is press the control key and it will pause the reading. And then to exit out of Chromevox, you can do Control alt z That will also turn on Chromevox. Now let's take a look at what Chromevox looks like when you are interacting on a Google Doc. So I'm going to hit Control alt z again to turn it on. Chromevox spoken feedback is ready. 2. Why is it a problem that plastic is durable? Unselected. All right, and now I'm going to hit tab to kind of move throughout my table. Column two, new line. Three, what are single use plastics? Selected. Three, what are single use plastics? Unselected. Four, where does most disposable plastic end up? Selected, selected. Four, where does most disposable plastic end up? Unselected. So to adjust the Chromevox settings, you're going to go back down to your taskbar in the systems menu, bring down your accessibility settings, and then click on the gear icon. 
This will bring up your settings tab again, but this time it'll take you directly to the accessibility tab. All right, from here you can click manage accessibility features. And then open Chromevox settings. Right now I have my Chromebox muted so it doesn't, um, doesn't get confusing. But here are the different settings that you can adjust. So descriptions, automatically reading the first page, speaking text under the mouse. So if you enable this, wherever your mouse is hovering, it will start to read or give you spoken feedback for whatever you're hovering over. And then there are different audio settings. You can change the voices as well as settings if you are using Braille. So again, there are a lot of keyboard shortcuts that you need to learn to use in order to make it effective, which is why it's probably not the ideal tool for most students unless they are learning and relying on those keyboard shortcuts um, on a more regular basis. The other reading tool that's built into a Chromebook that most students are going to use if they are going to use a text-to-speech tool is the select to speak. So when I turn this on, it puts a little icon um, down in my toolbar. So now when I push the select to speak button, I can draw a box around the text I want to listen to. And it will read it to me. Beep, beep, beep. The alarm on your cell phone shakes you from sleep. You stumble to the shower, dress, brush your teeth, and run a comb through your hair. There and just like with Chromebox, to stop the reading, you can press control. The other way that you can have text read to you with the select to speak is if you actually highlight the text that you want to have read, and then press search S. Beep, 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 the alarm on your cell phone shakes you from sleep. And then it will only read the text that you've selected. So a couple of different ways that you can have text read to you from a web page. So when you're in a Google Doc, selecting the text and using the search S button is probably the best way to have the text read to you. So I'm just going to select this text right here and then push my search and S buttons. When was the first human made plastic invented? Select to speak also works in Google Forms. So if you have a quiz or a questionnaire that you're having students fill out, you can go down to the taskbar, click select to speak, and draw a box around the text you want to listen to. Is plastic trashing our planet? Pause and think. About what percentage of plastic produced is made to be used once and then thrown away? Asterisk. And just like before, you can also highlight the text you want read and press search S. About what percentage of plastic produced is made to be used once and then thrown away? And I can even hear the options. 40%. 60%. 70%. And just like Chromevox, you can adjust the settings for select to speak. So I'm going to go back to my accessibility settings. And I'm going to click on manage accessibility free features. And I'm going to open my select to speak settings. Here I can choose a voice and then I can further personalize the settings. So within these settings, you can change the rate, pitch, and volume of the voice. And you can also preview any changes that you made before you exit out of the settings. So let's bring this speech rate down a bit and let's bring the pitch rate down and hear what that sounds like. 
Hi there, I'm your text-to-speech voice. And then I'll put it back to the default. Hi there, I'm your text-to-speech voice. So depending on your preferences, you can get pretty specific about the adjustments within the voice. You can also turn on highlighting so that the words are highlighted as the content is spoken. You can change the color of the highlights. Green and pink are usually the best for high contrast, just so you know. And then it will also give you a preview of what the highlighting will look like on a light background as well as a dark background. I usually encourage my students to turn this on for a couple of different reasons. First, it's just helpful to be able to see what content is being read. Um, and having the highlight makes it very easy to locate it within the page. It's also a really good reading support. Um, it provides visual feedback as well as the auditory components. So those combined just make a really, really powerful reading support. Now that I have highlighting enabled, I want to just show you quickly what that looks like on a website. What makes plastic so popular? Unlike natural materials such as wood and glass, plastic is lightweight. It's also cheap and durable. And that's it for the reading tools. In upcoming videos, I'll be going over writing, visual, and motor supports as well. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of those. I also just wrapped up a series where I shared my favorite digital annotation tools using a Chrome browser and an iPad. In case you missed it, head on over to my playlists and check it out. And until next time, keep learning something new every day.